I am here at Apple Park for the first time since 2019, and we are talking all things iPhone 14, some Apple Watch, and potentially AirPods Pro. So we're gonna get some hands-on time today, and hey, my name is Sarah Dichi, Rhymes with Peachy. Welcome to another video. I haven't done this in so long. Okay, let's go, guys. So we're here with a normal iPhone 14. Now, the big change is there is no iPhone mini, but it's being replaced by the iPhone 14 Plus. So this big size that was always reserved for the Pro models, you are now getting in the normal iPhone 14 lineup. So you have the 6.1 inch display right here and the 6.7 inch display. So if we go over here to the pros, it is the same sizes. So something tells me the iPhone 14 Plus is going to be a very popular model. And Apple also says it has the best battery life ever in an iPhone. The iPhone 14 has the same A15 chip that we had last year. However, it is a slightly enhanced version uh, with a five core GPU instead of four. The iPhone 14 Pros have a chip bump from the A15 to the A16. As as well as this feature that stole the show is no not the pill but the dynamic island yes they named it more on that later okay back to the iphone 14 so the main sensor is letting in more light it has a bigger 1.9 inch aperture so it's a larger 12 megapixel sensor and the true depth selfie camera has a huge upgrade as well so it features that larger 1.9 aperture as well and for the first time ever it actually has autofocus so you're going to notice much more depth with the selfie camera deep fusion upgrades enable better colors and better low light images that they are calling their photonic engine which just means better and low light so we're getting two times better for the ultra wide and 2.5 times better on the main camera in comparison to the iphone 13. action mode is basically image stabilization on steroids so think gimbal like video and they also added 4k 24 frames per second to cinematic mode i'm really glad they did limit this to the pro model so you're going to be getting that with the iphone 14. another big feature is uh, sim cards are now a thing of the past so you just set up an eSIM with your carrier and you know you don't have to worry about security risks of someone taking out your SIM card and swapping being able to use your phone number. The iPhone 14 has a new feature called crash detection which is a new feature that is also coming to the Apple Watch Series 8 so if you get in a car crash it will connect you to help. <laughs> Another big upgrade is emergency SOS via satellite so if you're somewhere without cell service and stuck but you have access to the sky basically iPhone will guide you in the right direction to access that satellite and it'll connect you to emergency services. And for less dramatic moments, you can basically use that same satellite feature to send out your location to family and friends via the Find My app. So this feature is free for the first two years of the purchase of the iPhone 14 and it is available in November. Okay, so let's talk about iPhone 14 Pro. So the price is still starting at $999 and $1099. Everyone was thinking we were gonna have a price bump, so that is good to see. So now your true depth camera, that selfie camera, is no longer in the notch for the Pro models, but is in the pill-shaped cutout, what they are calling the dynamic island. It was kind of funny when we were in there watching. Uh, people gave kind of a chuckle with a name, but once you kind of see what it does, the blend of software and hardware is kind of crazy. You have all these different animations, as you're swiping outside of your music going into the clock. You'll see the dynamic island kind of morphs depending on what you're doing. Sometimes it stays as one, it splits into two, and then you can tap it if you're listening to music and it expands and you can press next on your song or pause or play. How silly of us to think that Apple just wouldn't make this extra. I would say it's almost like a touch bar for your iPhone. So for the colors, we have space black as well as this new purple. We have gold and silver. So a lot of the updates have to do with not just the camera, but the super retina display. So it is 
brighter. You can now view HDR content at 1600 nits and the display can even go up to 2000 nits in sunny days. As someone who now lives in Texas, I welcome that. It's a hot day in Cupertino today. Good, yes. I like. The Pro models also feature the always on display. Now you need an LTPO display for this to work, hence why it's only in the Pro models. This allows the display to change the refresh rates depending on what you're doing. So when you're playing games, you know, it'll ramp up to the 120 hertz, but when the always on display is on, it'll ramp down to one hertz so it doesn't kill your battery. The A16 chip that is in the Pro models is Apple's first four nanometer process chip. It focuses on power efficiency, display, and the camera. So the camera has some big improvements, mainly that main sensor. This is now a 40 megapixel sensor. So this is 65% larger than the previous iPhone Pro. We also have a 24 millimeter focal length now. And for those normal JPEGs that you're shooting every day, it's going to combine each four pixels into one. So you're still gonna get a 12 megapixel end result. So it's not gonna, you know, weigh down your storage. And then for you photographers out there, if you can handle that full 48 megapixel in result of a photo, you can switch over to Apple Pro Raw. So this is going to give you just insane detail. I am really excited to test it out. The telephoto is still a three times zoom. However, they now offer a new two times telephoto zoom by using the middle 12 megapixel of the sensor. We have an updated flash that adjusts depending on what focal length you shoot with. And in the Pro models, again, we're getting the updated cinematic mode with 4K 24 frames per second, as well as the action mode which is gonna turn your iPhone into a gimbal. Okay, so it's been three years since we've seen the last AirPods Pro release, and now we have the second generation, which gets me really excited. The form factor is actually very similar to the previous form factor. You have a speaker on the bottom as well as a little lanyard cutout on the side. The price is $249 and they are available September 23rd. And I will say, I think the AirPod Pro video was my favorite video of the event. I just like felt that music and the soul, the animations were so, so cool. Um, this is probably uh, not the most sexy release, but the one I'm the most excited about because I use the AirPod Pros religiously when I'm traveling. So I'm gonna try the active cancellation, uh, which is said to be two times better than the last. Okay, so we're in transparency mode right now. I hear all the people. This is like the perfect environment to test this out. Am I, am I screaming right now? <laughs> okay, so the previous iteration AirPods Pros to pause, you would basically press down on the stem, but they've added touch to where now you swipe up it's a little awkward, but if you find the right fit with the tip, your AirPods are staying in your ear, so it's all good. You swipe up to increase the volume and go down to decrease the volume. It has the new H2 chip and something super cool is you can actually use the true depth camera on your iPhone to create a personal profile for spatial audio. And it'll literally personalize your audio based on the shape of your head and your ear. You get six hours of listening time on a single charge. That is a 33% increase from the previous iteration and you get 30 hours of listening with the case. Okay, let's talk about all things Apple Watch Ultra. And I think people were surprised that it came in at the price of $799. People were predicting that $1,000 mark. With all these Apple Watch updates and also the kind of emergency SOS with the iPhones, I have never felt more introverted in my life. I spend most of my days in front of my computer not being outside. Do this many people really go outside and hike all the time? Is this normal? <laughs> It's like half of the keynote. People out like hiking and being like, I get lost, SOS. I shouldn't be making fun of that because that's very serious. I need to go outside more. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. So speaking of that, it has L1 and L5 GPS, which is great for dense city conditions. They gave the example of people running the marathon in the middle of Chicago with all of the skyscrapers above them. Apparently it's very hard to track in those conditions. It also has a super loud sound that can alert anyone that 
plants around you if you're out in the wilderness alone hiking up to 600 feet. I feel like this is super, super helpful. And then also some really great features for you divers out there. The screen is huge and very flat. And also there's a new button. So this is the orange action button and you can assign it to make your watch do different things. The digital crown is bigger and now kind of housed in this bump on the side of the watch. They added a second speaker and better mics. So you're able to call someone if you're in those extreme conditions. Again, if you have snow or crazy wind whirling around you and the compass app is fully redesigned. It gets 36 hours of battery life on a single charge and up to 60 hours with a battery optimization update that they said they will release this fall. Again, I know battery life is a big thing for Apple Watch users. Obviously with an Apple Watch, you get more features opposed to maybe a Garmin watch or something like that. And so that is the trade-off. I know people with fancy GPS watches that will go for weeks, right? And I think people want that from the Apple Watch. So put that on our wish list for the Apple Watch that will release maybe in a few years. In a decade, maybe we'll get an Apple Watch that lasts a week. All of this talk of the Apple Watch, it makes me actually want to get moving, right? So that's the Ultra, but we also need to talk about the Apple Watch Series 8. Let's go outside, let's grab some sun, guys. Oh my gosh, it is so hot here. Oh my gosh, just trying to find any kind of shade. The Apple Watch Series 8 starts at $399, $499 for the cellular version. It's swim, dustproof, and crack resistant. And with its new low power mode, you're going to be able to go 36 hours on only one charge. There's music everywhere here. It makes filming audio a little bit hard. The Series 8 features two new sensors that can detect if you have been in a car crash. So it runs only when you're in the car. And, you know, I was starting to think, I was like, man, I fall a lot. I need this. But hey, fall detection has been a part of the Apple Watch for a while. And that feature actually has come to the new update of the Apple Watch SE, which is good. Um, literally this morning, I got out of the Uber and the first thing I did was look to my left. Oh, do I need to go over there? I turned around, stepped in the grass instead of the sidewalk and just fell. So whoever is in charge of Apple security will be laughing at me. That'll be great. Send me that clip, please, if you can. The new Series 8 features a new temperature sensor, which is huge for women's health. This is actually going to help track ovulation. Now, for all of you dude bros out there that's like, ah, oh, I don't I don't care, guys. This is actually so huge. I know people who use taking their temperature as a almost form of like birth control, knowing when they ovulate. The body is a wonderful thing, and there's many different ways uh, to track this, but now you can do it straight from your Apple Watch so it can actually detect temperature changes um, of up to 0.1 degrees Celsius, which is crazy. And then it will send you a notification if it's likely that you have all of you, all of you, that's a hard word to say. <laughs> ovulated. So this is huge and it makes it so much more accessible and easy if you're trying to get pregnant and tracking ovulation. Oh my gosh. Hi guys. Okay, editing Sarah here. How are you? Thank you for watching this video. Like, subscribe down below. I just released a line of tech stands, an iPad stand that I have always wanted. It is great for note takers. You can bring it down, draw, take notes, but bring it back up. There's also an awesome dual charging phone stand uh, where you can put a Qi wireless charging device down below and also an iPhone or a MagSafe compatible phone up at the top and they're all heavy duty super metal stands and there's only a few days left on the kickstarter that we just launched um it has been so excited to see we are just so far past our goal um but yeah i wanted to shout out on this video in case you haven't gotten a chance to look at it um, and it was a lot of fun it was a lot of fun i'm kind of out of practice the same day film edit upload i'm gonna go to bed now thanks guys stay peachy okay bye Great,